We were cruising through the southern Great Barrier Reef on the luxurious Coral Princess. It was morning and we had arrived at a lovely private island, this one leased by the cruise company itself. This whole area is dotted with gorgeous islands and you do have the opportunity to go ashore. This is Polaris Island and we're here for a bit of a nature walk and some snorkeling. Polaris is part of the Palm Island Group, also discovered and named by Captain Cook. It is surrounded by fringing reefs and is an ideal spot for snorkeling, picnicking and even camping. We joined the island caretakers for a lazy few hours on the sand. Coral Princess's general manager Mark Fifield had joined us on the beach. Well, Polaris is a, uh, an island that we lease and uh, it's uh, just, a, just part of the Palm group of islands and we've got access to the small part of the beach here with a, the with a caretaker's house and uh, we use this as our, our lunching, barbecuing and just beach snorkeling spot so it's, yeah. a, it's a reserve and uh, we're lucky enough to have sole access to it. It's nice every now and then to get off the boat, isn't it? It is, yes. Get onto some solid ground. Absolutely. <laughs> and people are also comfortable in the water. It's a chance for them to have an easy swim off the beach and a snorkel and, and, uh, and just relax. Then it was time for an island bushwalk with Dennis. This huge mound is actually a bird's nest created by the orange-footed scrub fowl. They are a megapode. Now what they do is they scrape the ground looking for uh, grubs and over the successive generations, so this is probably you know, 10 or 15 years old, and they scrape all the earth and, and, rot and leaves into a huge mound. And what they do is they lay their eggs in the top and cover them over. And the rotting leaf litter uh, generates heat which incubates the eggs. We even stumbled across the rare rubber thong bush, a plant unique to Australia. The white sand beach is layered with coral fragments washed up from the reef, and Dennis is guaranteed to make a new discovery at every step. You see all this, these fine rocks here? That's there uh, at some. Um, Pumice. There's a couple of big ones around here. Pumice. And pumice is, fr is from volcanoes, right? And Australia doesn't have any volcanoes, but there is some in Melanesia, New Guinea, Solomon Islands, or whatever, and they spew out pumice, and that drips across, across with the currents. Now, pumice is basically uh, gas bubbles pr impregnated through the rock. And uh, if you feel that rock, it's really, really light. In fact, the only rocks I know that float. After bushwalking, the best way to cool off was to head into the cool blue sea. Our vessel beckoned and it was time to say goodbye and head from shore to ship. Up ahead was the magnificent Hitchinbrook Channel, which skirts between the mainland and Hitchinbrook Island, which is Australia's largest national park island. This long jetty is for loading sugar and is also a popular spot for fishermen. All around, soaring peaks plunge down to dense forests and thick twisted mangroves that provide the breeding grounds for many fish. My mum and I made the most of the boat's jacuzzi while we drifted through the narrow passage and learned some more about this region's unique ecosystems. Aboriginal people used to think or knew that mangroves were a rich source of food. Uh, they would get uh, the mangrove worm from the branches. They break the branches and get mangrove worms. A lot of the trees have medicinal purposes. They break up off the leaves and crush them up for to treat sores or whatever. The shellfish, when the tide goes out, mud crabs. And also Aboriginal people used to build a, a, a sea wall, a fish trap, a circular wall coming out from the bank. 
about mid-tide. Now as the tide comes in, the water flows over the top, the fish will swim across. When the tide drops, those fish get caught in that pool. This narrow mangrove-lined channel is a drowned river valley and the slow journey across the shallow Lucinda Bar allowed some perfect time for bird watching and just simply chilling out. As the day drew to a close, we approached the lovely Dunk Island with fellow travellers from around the world. I'm honestly, we're on day three now and I'm still trying to comprehend all I've seen. Um, it's just the sights, the, the reef, the view, the ride, it's, it's all been amazing. It's, it's been such, an, it's been such an, um, a teaching moment as well because we've been taken through lots of information about the coral, the reef, the nature we've been through as well. So it's been a really, really complete experience. It's fantastic. We've never been before. So um, we didn't know quite what to expect, but it's beyond everything we could imagine. We, ha we had plans only to visit her in, in Perth, in uh, Western Australia. But some friends of us told us that if you are in Australia, you, you, you must also go to the Great Barrier Reef. And then we start Google and found that, uh, okay, from Cairns, we can have a, f a trip of it, and it, it's, it's, it's mar marvelous. A lot of the islands here are rich with rainforests, so if you have the opportunity to take a tour, do so. Let's go. Dunk Island has some lovely rainforest trails. Welcome to the Dunk Island Rainforest, isn't it magnificent? Look at these little palm trees everywhere. Little solitaire palms. And what happens in a rainforest is the canopy comes over quite thick and stops light coming to the forest floor. However, we don't have much of a canopy now because we had that very severe cyclone three years ago and the canopy is slowly growing back. But a lot of these trees, have, uh, palm trees as well, have adapted to living in a rainforest with a canopy and they grow very very tall and you can see their stems growing right up right up so they can get to the light Dark Island's first white resident author E.J. Banfield immortalized the escape through his book Confessions of a Beach Coma and it's believed this island's natural beauty saved him from illness and prolonged his life. Well, it's not hard to see why, particularly when you add in some beach cocktails and canapes at sunset. A traditional Aussie barbecue was the perfect end to a perfect day.